Hey, what's going on everyone? In today's video, we're going to be going over uh, mill dot reticle, which looks something like this. And we're going to, we're going to also be going over what that translates into through your scope and at your reticle as well. Um, if you find any of this information uh, helpful to you, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It certainly helps me out in the long run. Um, and with that in mind, let's get started. So what is a mill dot or a milliradian? Milliradian is an angular measurement of a thousandth of a radian. And what a radian is, is the measurement of a distance traveled around a circle. So it would be the space right here. A milliradian is a thousandth of that. So if you had a thousand little deals here, each one of those would equal one one thousandths of a radian. And that's what we're using to measure in our scope. How that translates to you is 3.6 inches from the center of one dot to the center of the other is one mil. 3.6 inches at 100 yards per 100 yards. This is what it equates to at different distances. So as you can see, you simply add 3.6 to your next distance. And you can use simple mathematics in order to figure out what your finer points are, like the 0.5, the 0.7, the 0.3, so forth and so on. But let's take a look. At 100 yards, one mil is equal to 3.6 inches. At 200, 7.2, 300, 10.8. 414.4, so forth and so on. And remember, that is from the center of one dot to the center of next, equaling one mil. Now, this can be used to figure out a number of different things. Range, holdover, bullet drop, and adjustments needed in order to hit the target. And here are a couple of the equations that you will need in order to figure them out. If, if you are measuring your target in yards, let's say a military-aged mill that measures at six feet, that would equate to two yards. And that's what I mean by size of target in yards. Now, you take that two yards, times it by 1,000, as you can see here in the equation, and then you divide it by the number of mils the target takes up. In this case, it would be one, two, three, four. So now you have 2,000 divided by four, which equals 500. That is your distance to the target. Something to keep in mind, this 1,000, when you're measuring in yards, is a constant. If, for whatever reason, in the rare occasion that you are not shooting at a military age male that is six feet tall, and you have to measure your target in inches, that equation is here. This number is the constant in that equation. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty as to why, but this is where knowing something about the equation comes into play. And that can mean being fairly good at, at measuring distance with your eye or having a rangefinder for reference or just knowing the size of uh, the animals in your area for hunting. Like let's say in, in my area, from hoof to the top of the shoulder for elk in my area, for a mature elk, is 55 inches. So we're going to use that number as the example for this equation. So your target is 55 inches tall you're going to times that by 27.77 and then divide it by the number of mils. So let's say from the hoof to the shoulder, your target takes up one, two, three, four mils. And that will give you a distance of 381 yards. Again, the 27.77 
is a constant when you're measuring in inches. There's also one more way that this can be quite helpful to you, especially when you know that this is a constant measurement. As we said earlier, one mil is equal to 3.6 inches at 100 yards. And you saw in the earlier example that as that distance grows, the number grows as well. Here's how you can use that for other measurements. Let's say you have a known distance of a buck of, uh, let's say, 200 yards. And you want to measure the spread of his antlers. I'm not going to try and draw a deer, let alone antlers, because I'm a far better shooter than I am an artist. But let's say the spread of his antlers is one, two, three, four mil. The formula for this is going to be slightly different, but essentially the same concept. You're going to take the distance of the target, 200, and you're going to multiply it by the number of mils, and then divide by your constant of 27.77 inches. And bear in mind, this is to measure inches. And that will give you a measurement of 28 0.8 inches. And you now know that the spread of the buck is 28.8 inches. And I mean, that, it could be handy information for figuring out, let's say, the size of a fence post for reference, or, you know, figuring out what your bullet drop might need to be and where you need to hold over with your scope. And as we saw earlier, can be used for figuring out distance to your target. Other things you might put on a range card are the size of a deer inside your reticle comparable to what size that might be. And that is a lot easier than you might think it is. Because you don't actually need to know, you don't actually need to have a deer available for you in, in, in order to do this. As I said earlier, if you know the size of a mature male deer in your area, uh, let's say it's 37 inches. You can use that number via this calculation right here to figure out how many mils that animal is going to take up in your scope so that you can make a quick observation for your scope. Let's say he takes up uh, two mils, and that's a long ways away. Well, now you know that two mils after you've done your calculations, is equal to probably around 700 yards, if I remember correctly. I think, I think it's actually closer to 750 yards, so let's, let's say 750 yards. And then at 3 mil, your target, I believe, is 500, so forth and so on. And you can put these things on your range card so that instead of pulling out a calculator and trying to do these, these formulas while a deer is running through a tree line out of your sight, you can simply look at your range card and figure out the information that you need in order to make a quick decision and a quick shot. And like I said earlier, if you know at this distance what your bullet drop is, these things will dramatically improve your shooting. I promise. And knowing what you know now about mil dot reticles, such as what one mil equals at a certain distance, this is going to turn the versatility of the scope into almost infinite possibilities. Um, holdovers, windage, things of that nature, it, it all makes a difference, such as if you see grass. These can be used to figure out what wind would be. Like, let's say at the center of your reticle, the wind is blowing to the first or second, you can assume that that's about a 10 mile an hour wind. Blowing all the way sideways, you can assume that that's probably 25 and above. Which I would not take a shot in this. But these things can be used, especially if you know how your bullet performs in certain wind conditions, elevation, barometric pressure, so forth and so on. This mill dot scope, I promise you, will be invaluable. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that up for just a second so you can write that down. And while you're screenshotting that, I'm going to go over a couple of other reticle options, such as a VMR. And VMR reticle 
it's going to have hash marks in it in between the milliradian measurements. These subtensions can be used to get the 0.5s, the 0.3s of your mathematical equation and make it a little bit more precise. But they also provide more holdovers. And in my opinion, are quite a bit easier to use. Because if you're trying to figure out that 0.5 and you don't have it, let's say in this area, and you guess wrong, at extreme distances, that's going to make a huge difference. And this is where a minute of angle comes into play. And the shorthand definition of what minute of angle is, it is 1 60th of a degree measured inside of a circle. So let's say this is your 1 degree. 1 60th of that is what a minute of angle is. Now, when you're using minute of angle at 100 yards, let's say this is your adjustment of minute of angle, that same adjustment at 200 yards is now a bigger adjustment. And at 300 yards, it's even bigger. So missing that 0.5 or that 0.3 can make a difference at like 1,000 yards. That 0.2 decimal in your mathematical equation, 100, 200, 300, might mean the difference of maybe a half an inch if you're unlucky. At 1,000 yards, that half inch becomes 10 inches. And that can mean the difference between shooting an animal in the heart or shooting it through the, through the lung cavity and not actually doing any damage. So in my opinion, a VMR reticle is quite a bit more versatile than just a mill dot. However, if you don't plan on doing really long range shots, I wouldn't waste your money on a VMR reticle. Because there's just, there's too much information in there. And as my dad always taught me, the more you know about your environment, the less you actually need to know about your scope. That's about all I got for the mill dot reticle. Um, if you found this information helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel. And as always, thank you for your time.